Hi. So my name is Thomas Chu, and I'm here to talk about Hepatitis B Virus 101. And so if you ask a scientist to do this, this is basically what you get. A whole lot of lines, a whole lot of jargon, really complicated. And to be honest, you don't need that. It doesn't really matter what each of these things is called or what we call it. What's really important are the concepts, okay? And I'll go through each of those in, these, in this uh, short presentation. So first of all, let's start with what hepatitis B is. What is a virus? Is it alive? Is it dead? It's actually a little bit of both. I think the best metaphor for it is to think of hepatitis B virus like a seed. It itself is not alive, but it has the potential to become something alive. So when you're infected with hepatitis B at the start, you, you get these seeds and, and they're traveling through your blood. They meet the liver and that's basically where it likes to embed itself and start growing. And this is what happens. And the first thing hepatitis B does is form CCC DNA. It sticks its roots into the liver. And from that, it sprouts and produces more of itself, hepatitis B virus. So that those seeds that come from those newly infected cells go on to infect neighboring cells. Uh, and, and we get a whole lot of production of virus. CCC DNA also allows the cells to produce other proteins from the virus. In this case, surface antigen, which I've pictured here as a leaf. And so in the first phase, in the mu tolerance phase, this is basically what happens. The entire liver is infected with hepatitis B. It's producing a lot of seeds, a lot of surface antigen, but the trees themselves don't appear to actively harm the liver. There's very few symptoms that are occurring when you're in this phase. What happens in the next phase is that the immune response starts to recognize, hey, something's not right, and it's time to clear out these infected cells. I've shown the immune system here as a sort of bulldozer, and it's trying to get rid of these infected cells. And so what happens is the immune system starts to clear the virus, kill those cells that are infected. And what it also starts to do is because there's fewer infected cells to produce the virus, you get a decrease in the amount of HPV DNA that's circulating. Eventually, with enough immune response, you start to clear a lot of the virus, okay? A lot of the virus infected cells. And so you have a very low amount of HPV DNA in the blood. But what happens, the virus is very tricky. It produces these new forms that only produce surface antigen. And that's important because surface antigen allows the virus to hide from the immune response. This surface antigen seems to uh, block the view to uh, virus infected cells. And so it becomes, it, it can't clear every infected cell. Moreover, there's still that CCC DNA that's still there. And those can, new trees can sprout from that, new seeds produce from that, and you get new infection events. New, that, those seeds can now infect uh, new cells and start to produce more virus. The immune system 
recognizes this again, and that inflammation uh, restarts. So in this phase, you have a lot more virus in the blood, a lot more liver damage. And that becomes a problem because that inflammation is linked to liver cancer and liver disease. And we're trying to get rid of that. When we're doing blood tests, we're trying to figure out what's actually happening in the liver. Um, so as you know, HPV DNA tests for the amount of virus that's in the blood, surface antigen, obviously the amount of leaves in the blood. When we get an immune response against surface antigen and clear it all away, we know that without those leaves, you can't produce new trees. And so that person is protected or cured. E antigen is really tricky, but it's basically used to determine whether you're early on in those first two phases or later on in the latter two phases. When we go for treatment, we're basically covering the, the liver and stopping the virus from producing new virus DNA, new amounts of virus. However, that CCC DNA, the infected cells, the surface antigen, all still there. So there's still risk because when we stop taking that, those treatments, then the virus comes back. New virus is produced. So how are we going about trying to cure the infection with these new drugs? Well, there are three different ways. And the ultimate cure will probably be a combination of these uh, uh, strategies. The first is to remove the underlying infection, including the CCC DNA. So we get completely uninfected cells already now in the liver. This is actually really hard. So there are other ways to suppress the virus from producing new proteins. That is to say, we can't produce new leaves or, 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 or uh, seeds. CCC DNA may still be there, but may be completely suppressed. And that may be a way to, to induce a, a sort of uh, maybe incomplete cure, but still functionally active cure. And there are other ways entirely is to activate the host, our own immune responses to ultimately help our bodies completely clear the virus infection. And basically, um, uh, John will be talking in the next talk about the ways that we've come up and we're presented at this meeting to be able to do all of these things. So thank you uh, and happy to take any questions at the Q&A panel. Thank you.